Example seven, two three-phase loads are fed from a 60 hertz supply via three parallel feeders, each with an impedance 0 0.1 plus J 0 0.25 ohms. Per phase, load one is Y connected, five megawatts, 0 0.5 power factor lag, and load two is delta connected, five megavolt ampere, 0 0.6 power factor lead. The voltage at the load is 4.16 kilovolts. Determine the following, the single phase equivalent, label all components, the real and reactive power of the combined loads, the power factor of the combined loads, the percent voltage regulation when all three feeders are in service, and the percent voltage regulation when two feeders are out of service. So the first thing we're going to do is to draw the equivalent circuit for one phase. So here's our voltage source labeled as the voltage source for one phase. Here is how we're going to represent our three parallel feeders. A resistor and inductor in series, a resistor and inductor in series, and all three of those are in parallel. So this is 0 0.1 ohms, J 0 0.75, 0 0.25 ohms. 0 0.1, 0 0.1, J 0 0.25 ohms. J 0 0.25 ohms. And then over here, we have our two loads. Load one and load two. And I'm going to label the voltage across the load as 2402 with an angle of zero degrees. And for load one, this is going to be 1.667 megawatts per phase with a 0.5 para power factor lag. Remember, we're dividing by three so that this can be the power for one phase. And then over here, I'm going to have 1.667 MVA per phase with a 0.6 power factor lead. Note that we always assume our voltages are a line voltage, so that means that 4.16 kilovolts is V line. And here we have V phase. So V phase is equal to V line divided by the square root of two. So that is 4160 divided by root three, which is where we get 2402. And we are assuming that V phase is also our reference. So that's why we give it an angle of zero degrees. So in the next step, we're going to find the real and reactive power for the combined load. So this is part B. So for load one, we're going to have 1.667 over the power factor, and the angle is going to be the arc cosine of 0 0.5. So that's going to equal 3.33 with an angle of 60 degrees, and that's mega volt ampere per phase. Or in rectangular form, that would be 1.667 plus J 2.887 mega volt ampere per phase. Now, for load two, we're going to have 1.667 with an angle that is negative arc cosine of 0 0.6, which is 1.667 with an angle of negative 53.1 degrees, and that is mega volt amperes per phase. So for load two, in rectangular form, that would be one minus J 1.33 mega volt ampere per phase. So that means that our total complex power for the loads would be S1 plus S2, which is going to equal 2.667 plus J 1.553 mega volt amperes per phase or 
are in rectangular form, 3.086 with an angle of 30.2 degrees, mega volt ampere per phase. So then the total combined complex power for the load would be three times the complex power for one phase. So that is going to be three times 3.086 with an angle of 30.2 degrees. So the total complex power combined for the combined load is 9.258 with an angle of 30.2 degrees megavolt ampere for the system or in rectangular form, eight plus J 4.66 megavolt ampere per so for part C, we're going to find the power factor for the combined load. So that's going to be the power factor for the cosine of 30.2 degrees. That is a positive angle, so it will be lagging, and it's 0 0.8641 lag. So now for part D, we're going to find the percent voltage regulation when all three feeders are in service. So we're going to first combine the three feeders in parallel and point one in parallel with point one in parallel with point one is 0 0.0333 plus J 0.25 in parallel with 2.5 in parallel with point two five is 0 0.0833. And that's ohms per phase. So the current is equal to 3.086 with an angle of negative 30.2 degrees divided by 2402 with an angle of zero degrees, okay? And note that this is S over V conjugate. So the current is 1285 with an angle of negative 30.2 degrees. And the units are amps. So then the voltage from the generator or the source for one phase is going to equal 2402 with an angle of zero degrees plus the impedance of the feeder 0 0.0333 plus J 0 0.0833 times the current through that line, which is 1285 with an angle of negative 30.2 degrees. And so that voltage is 2494 with an angle of 1.6 degrees. So now the voltage at the source as a line voltage is going to be the square root of three times 2494, and this is just the magnitude, and that's going to be 4,319 volts. So the voltage regulation is going to be 4319 minus, we need the line voltage for the output. So that's going to be the square root of three times 2402 divided by the square root of three times 2402. Times 100. So the voltage regulation is 4319 minus 4160 divided by 4160 times 100, which equals 3.83%. For 7E, we're going to solve this problem again, assuming we only have one feeder in service. So now ZF is simply 0 0.1 plus J 0 0.25 ohms per phase. And now the phase voltage at the source is 2402 with an angle of 0 degrees plus the impedance of the feeder 0 0.1 plus J 0 0.25 times the current, 
which was 1285 with an angle of negative 30.2 degrees. And now that phase voltage is 2683 with an angle of 4.6 degrees, units or volts. So what about the generator or source voltage as a line voltage? Then you're going to take the square root of three times 2683 for the magnitude, and that value is 4,647 volts. And so finally, the voltage regulation is 4647 minus 4160 over 4160 times 100. So the voltage regulation is 11.7%. So you can see by not having the three different feeders, our voltage regulation is a little bit worse because that is actually greater than 5%, which we know ideally we want voltage regulation under that.